It's good to see you guys. Uh, just in reviewing the tape, a fair amount to improve on. Um, but good to see the uh, response and good to see the fight and good to see the, uh, the final outcome. You know, we're all hopeful that this can propel us into this next week. I have a lot of respect for the Red Raiders and, you know, the momentum that they have and the team that they have and the coaches that are coaching them and the players that are playing. And so know that uh, we will have another big test ahead of us and are looking forward to it. Take any questions you guys got. Dave, uh, you talked the other day about um, we'll see more of the tempo offense going forward. Uh, as you examine the film, I mean, what was it about that that was so effective, you know, late in the game during the comeback, and is that sustainable? Appreciate that. Yeah, I thought um, the tempo was effective because we were able to get lined up quick and there was no shifts in motions and it forced the defense to have to build a, to not make calls according to our formation, right? Get lined up, set edges, get tight on coverage, things that were so-so um, being accomplished. And I think we were able to take advantage of those spaces in between. Um, now I think moving forward, you know, it has to be more um, diverse than that. It has to be more built in to the fabric of our offense than that. And um, that is what we're working on and preparing right now. Coach, I know you mentioned, you know, we want to see what we see in practice moved on to the football field on mm -hmm. Saturdays. What exactly clicked mm -hmm. in that second half? Appreciate the question. I think guys just continued to fight and believe. I think the locker room was one that um, believed we could still win. And when we were talking in there, the guys that were talking believed we could win. And when I was talking, I believed that we could win. And I could, I made eye contact with guys, and they believed it. And so, you know, games like that, you know, I was, I was at Hawaii and we played Utah State. Gary Anderson was the coach, and I was on the, on the other end of that. We're, we were up and then lost the game to Utah State, came roaring back. I think I mentioned to y'all a couple of years ago, I was um, at a school, we were up on Auburn, or Auburn was up on us, and we came roaring back. Uh, nothing quite like this one. But, I, you know, just being in the past, I haven't been in games like that, there is a belief that gets transmitted to other guys that maybe were so-so with their belief. And then it just builds, and it takes off. And so very hopeful that that's what happens here. That's what we're pushing for. Dave, particularly as a freshman, is Caden Jenkins playing like at an elite level? Appreciate that, yeah. There's always been just a great confidence and an energy with him, and there's just been, um, there's been no flinching with him from the minute he stepped on campus over here. And then there's just a great, um, you know, just as a person, just a warmth and a... Um, um, a welcoming aspect to him that I just, I mean, you want to like him and you want to root for him. And so it's a way cool story. And uh, I think the best is yet to come for him. Coach, obviously year two with Joey mm -hmm. at Tech, when you look at their team, what areas do you see and you say, oh, yeah, that's trademark Joey. Yeah, that, I see mm -hmm. Joey's hands all over that kind of thing. Appreciate that. Yeah, they compete. And so you watch that Oregon game and – that was back and forth, and that was tooth and nail and all of it. And so um, they will, you know, we are going to get their best shot for sure. And they've been given their best shot to every every uh, opponent that they play. And so you can see the fight. You can see the, the, um, the competition in the games, and you can see the not quitting. And so it's uh, a definite test for us. Dave, I want to go back to that tempo for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a place that Monterey can excel? Because obviously he had some big plays down the stretch, and mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, sometimes y'all were taking advantage of the defense not being able to get lined mm -hmm. up just quite right. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it a place where he can get out in space? I believe so. I believe it benefits the offensive line. I think it benefits Blake Shapin. I think he's probably – he is – I know he is at his best 
when there's some momentum and, and things are kind of in a flow form. And so I just, you know, I look at it as just an evolving of the offense that we have and how can we move our pieces to better spots, um, you know, um, keeping the same systems in place, but uh, evolving to um, a faster operating system. And so we're looking forward to it. Dave, I wonder if sometimes it's harder to flip the page mm -hmm. coming off a win like this than mm -hmm. coming off a tough loss. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, my only, well, my, my experience just being on a couple of these wins is that there is, you know, there, there is a um, kind of an expansion of belief, you know, and, and it's not that guys did not believe. It's not that at all. It's that, um, that, hey, this is happening right now, and you're a part of it, and everything you do matters, and everything here counts, and, you know, we're, we're going to do this thing right here, right now. It's the immediacy of it is kind of brought, is, is kind of brought to bear and has uh, put it right there in their face so there's nowhere else to look. And so I think a win like that does that. And so... You know, we're going to talk about the positive things. There's a fair amount of negative things that have to get fixed. Um, and so uh, that's really going to be the emphasis is the truth of all of it. And then, you know, we turn the, turn the page to a tech team that's going to pose a bunch of problems and tempo and wide splits and just all the things. And so, you know, um, and, and I know that this is, this is a game with a lot of uh, emotion and all of it behind it. And so... Uh, we are aiming to be at our best, to, the, to meet their best on Saturday. Coach, winning is always a priority, but can you talk about how important it is to win as the bye week is looming next week? Appreciate that. Yeah, I think the, the bye gives, you know, we've been beat up um, this year uh, so far, and so I think the bye is going to give us a chance to get healthy. And so the, the ability to kind of finish – um, you know, that, you know, third, fourth quarter run that we started and have that momentum go into the bye is really important. You know, our, our guys and everyone here wants to win the rest of the games that we got on our schedule, and so that's our goal. How was Mike Smith feeling? I saw him. He was kind of riding there in the second half. Mike, Mike Smith's out. He tore his ACL, so he's out for the season. Could you give some injury updates on uh, other guys? Jarrell Boykins, Trey Emery, Trey Wilson, and uh, is Dom Richardson still kind of beat up? Yeah, so Dom's got high ankle sprain. He pushes through. Um, you know, his carries are normally limited because he's pushing through. Uh, both uh, Trey, um, Trey Emery is working his way back. Jarrell Boykins is working his way back. A lot of that's getting in playing shape. And then uh, there's someone else I'm missing. Trey Wilson. Trey Wilson had a concussion. Yeah. Hey, uh, random events and setbacks. Uh -huh. Is that one you had in the holster, or is that just did that just come out? And can you uh, can you cash in on that? Maybe trademark it, get a T-shirt or something. No. Yeah. It's um. Well, the I think what we brought up. I don't know. I can't remember the. Um, you know, in 20, it was 20, 2014, we played, uh, I was at Wisconsin, we played Auburn, I was in a bowl game, and uh, I was just miserable pre preparing for them, just all their gadget plays and just all of it, and then two weeks to prepare, and, and I thought we really played them well, we gave up 30-some points and won in overtime, and then we played them all throughout the years there in Baton Rouge, and you know, edges was such a huge, important thing. We have to set edges, and it's, and everything starts with that. And and so this week, you know, having the opportunity to do that from day one, you know, a week ago today, you know, that was the emphasis. And here's all this film, and here's all these drills, and here's us doing it in practice. And then the very first play, we don't set an edge, and it goes for whatever it is. And so it's just, you know, there's a reason why, you know, and that as and this is not to to put anything on players or. As coaches, we have to find a way to get it across better. But I think it's not reacting from that, it's responding to that. And uh, I thought we were able to do that, and I think that enabled us to win at the end. And that's just hard to do when, um, 
you know, you've taken some punches. So, Coach, in terms of Texas Tech, what impresses you about what they're able to do in terms of running the ball as a team that's top half in the country in that area? Appreciate that. Yeah, they spread you out, and then they run gap schemes. And so they'll pull a tackle. We call it a dart play. Or they'll pull a guard and a tight end. So they run counter, uh, GY. And then their backs are really patient. And so the backs will stay behind the pullers. If the pullers are coming this way and the backs come in, he'll stay behind, stay behind. Then if there's no force, he'll bounce it. If there is hard force, he'll, he'll, he could cut it all the way back. So the, uh, the spacing, the patience, and then the big playability, the speed, to, you know, when they do get uh, in open grass to make the most of it. Um, and the final thing I'd add to that would be the tempo. I think there are times that where there, sh there should be edges by design and defense and everything, and there's not because they're worn down, guys are tired, guys are trying to get through this, get through this series, and something hits them. Who steps in in Mike Smith's place, and then do you have an update on Garrison as well? Garrison also tore his ACL. Yeah, so we lost two in this game, which has kind of been – it's been a tough season for injuries, and it continues. But um, uh, Josh White – We'll move up, see some uh, see some action, and then we want to be able to look at uh, J.J. Evans as well as uh, as Brooks and Carmelo, and so we need to build build some depth there. Is, is, oh, go ahead. Is there any concern in kind of the momentum, all the good vibes coming out of that the UCF game, kind of swinging too far the other way, you know, for 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 y'all and kind of being too confident, if that makes any sense? I think it's probably a pretty big vacuum of good vibes. And so we're not. <laughs> I think we're pretty safe in that area. Dave, do the performances by Monterey and Richard kind of help the offense as far as what the defenses you have to face will prepare? Appreciate that. I agree, yes. Um, you know, I think one of the areas that uh, needs improvement uh, among many, would be the play of our outside receivers. You know, I think prior to this game, it was an area that was um, kind of growing and there was promise and all that could still be. But we have to overcome the hiccup that was on Saturday. Um, there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups that we wanted to take advantage of and we failed to do so just by release and run of the route and separation and all of it. And so with that, the outside's taken away, the inside opened up, and I think we're able to see that. And so, um, you know, with Tech, uh, returns two really good corners. I think they're the two of the better players on their defense. And so, again, another great challenge for our outside people, uh, but then an opportunity for our inside people as well. And so we've got to get the, our outside guys going because they're talented, and I know that they're a huge part of what we do. But – while that is is being operated and worked on, we got um, we got some good options inside. What was the difference in Richard on Saturday from maybe the first four games? Appreciate that. Yeah, I think I've seen a difference in him maybe the last three weeks, and so you know I think um, you know any time that you're sharing reps and you're doing all of it, I think that has an effect. I think that would on anybody. And so I think for him to kind of find his role and his space and all of it uh, took a minute. And then I also think, um, you know, the just the um, the uh, ability to feel out, hey, this is how this is this is our line. This is when I run to the left, it's this. When I run to run, I run to the right, it's this. And just the timing and all of it, it takes a while to get to that. And sometimes when we're subbing guys in and out, you, it's hard to get into that rhythm. And um, these last couple of weeks, he's been able to get it. And so excited for what he's, uh, what he's doing and what he's about to do. Coach, what is different about the quarterback you guys are going to play in Baron Morton versus the guy who was at the start of the first couple of weeks in Tyler Shuff? Appreciate that. Yeah, I think the, um, the starter that they had, you could tell that um, he had been in some big games, had won some big games. There was when things got – got um, pressured up, he was way calmed down. I think the Oregon game is a great example of that. There's a couple others that are true that way as well. 
I think the guy we're playing now is very talented, can make all the throws, is can run and everything else. I think he's still working through the, um, um, you know, getting over the moments. I mean, there's some of the things that our guys are working through. Uh, when you saw, um, you know, our, our backup guys in there too. So I think it's just part of it. And so would like for that to continue for them, you know, at least one more week. Coach, uh, to start the season at home, one and three overall, but now you hit the road and you got that win. Can you mm -hmm. talk about returning to the playing stadium, how important it is to defend the home turf? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, our guys love playing at home. Um, we're, we want to be able to see a big crowd, and then we want to play well for a crowd, or for a home crowd, and just get the energy going at McLean like we know it can be. And we, um, you know, the football team and everyone involved has a huge part in that. And so we take that really seriously, and we're looking forward to, to another opportunity to do that. Coach, kind of an obvious question, but, you know, for you, how did it feel to see your guys pumped and excited again and celebrating a win that's something they're not, they haven't been used to for a little bit? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was, it's good to see the, the reward. It's good to see the recognition and it's good to see the, um, you know, there was a bunch of guys that weren't thinking about themselves. They were thinking about the, you know, like the Mike Smiths, the Garrisons, the guys that, uh, you know, um, I was talking to, uh, he probably wouldn't want me saying this, but I was talking to Matt Jones while he was puking on the sideline. And, um, you know, he was getting out the last, the last couple chunks of all of it, and then he goes up, we're going to win this game. He puts his helmet back on. And so when it's stuff like that, you know, you get to a point to where guys aren't, you know, Monterey Baldwin ran over like three or four guys. So you get to where guys aren't thinking about themselves anymore. They're thinking about doing it for other people. And that's, you're at a different level when it's that way. Thank you, David. Okay, thank you guys.